Before going ahead, you need to watch this video. This mother has not heard from her daughter for over two years. While the teenager was playing with other children in this Hindu village in southern Pakistan, a group of men came and kidnapped her. They came and took my daughter away. It was a nearby Muslim family. We went to get her back and were able to get her. But they came back and said she is married in our family and converted. The second time they came, they took her at gunpoint. France 24 is one of the few media houses that has been reporting about the atrocities on minorities in Pakistan. Hindus, Christians, Sikhs, even Muslim minorities, Shias and Ahmadiyas are subject to violence. Pakistan's second prime minister, Khwaja Nasimuddin, once said, I do not agree that religion is a private affair of the individual, nor do I agree that in an Islamic state, every citizen has identical right, no matter what his caste, creed and faith be. And this is not just about few Pakistani politicians. This is the problem of the masses. Pakistan have performed continuously poorly on the various studies on global outlook of liberalism. During Pakistan's separation from India in 1947, 20% of Pakistan's population consisted of minorities. However, reduced to only 3% as stated in 1998 Pakistan census report and it is expected to have declined even further now. And Lakshmi is just one of the many who is suffering but don't know where to complain. And as I said earlier, that it is not just limited to non-Muslims. On 2020 only, thousands of people gathered on the streets of Karachi and shouted slogans. Watch this video. Pakistan is a Muslim majority state with 80% Sunni population and only 6% identifies themselves as Shias. And hatred against Shias are not just limited to street cheering and slogans. Kasar Abbasi, a shopkeeper in KP province in Pakistan, was shot dead in public just because he identified himself as Shia. During the same demonstrations, mob can be seen pelting stones at Imam Barga, which is the congregation hall for Shia Muslim during ceremonies. Non-Muslim faiths like Hindus, Christians, Sikhs have constantly been targeted under blasphemy laws in Pakistan. And shockingly, most of these cases turned out to be fake. Pakistani Muslims are using blasphemy laws as a tool to uh, settle their scores in completely unrelated dispute. Fake or not, but this shows Pakistan's romance with conservatism, while most of the victims of these blasphemy laws are in fact Muslims. Mohammad Asghar, a 70-year-old British man, was shot dead inside the barrack by Muhammad Yusuf for insulting Prophet Muhammad. The court already sentenced him to death, yet he was shot. And this is not just limited to the civilians. Even lawyers who take up the cases of blasphemy accused meet the same fate. Rashid Rahman was threatened by his co-lawyer inside the court for taking up the case in defense for a blasphemy accused. In two days' time, two gunmen entered his office in southern Punjab and shot him dead. Now this brings us to the question, why? And the answers takes us back to the 1940s in Lahore congregation, when Pakistan's founding father Muhammad Ali Jinnah said, Hindus and Muslims can't exist together, they can never evolve a common nationality. Though he almost immediately faced criticism from liberal Muslim leaders like Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan and Maulana Abul Kalam Azad. But Jinnah's this attitude attracted conservative Muslim leaders towards him and created a sense of insecurity among the Muslim masses. In 1947, Pakistan became a separate nation but this perception attracted conservative religious politicians in Pakistan which started shaping the mind of the public. This sense of insecurity automatically gets converted into hatred and made Pakistan a security state. Just in three years, it became evident that Pakistan is not going to tolerate non-Muslim minorities on its soil. Mass cases of killings, rapes and religious convergence become common in Pakistan. Jogandranath Mandal, another founding father of Pakistan when objected to these atrocities, an arrest warrant was issued against him. He had to flee Pakistan to the neighboring India and ironically, when arrest warrant was issued against him, he was law and justice minister of Pakistan. 
according to Pakistan census report of 1947 when Pakistan was created Hindus constituted about 15% of the population of West Pakistan by 1998 census it is about 1.6% of the total population which means the population has been declined by 90% in just 50 years Pakistan's insecurities not only killed its minorities but Pakistan overall paid a heavy price for that we destroyed economy many military coups in the past, accusations of terror financing, presence in FATF list and debt-ridden economy only created concerns and frustration among genuine Pakistani thinkers, while Pakistani military used this as an opportunity to rule the country. Many generals were later found to be involved in corruption as well. It is high time that Pakistan need to re-evaluate their relationship with their minorities. Until then, their insecurities won't go away. Their conservative mentality will be misused by extremist politicians as an opportunity to justify filling their pockets. So what are your thoughts? Please let us know in the comment section below. We will soon meet in our next video. This is Shantanu for Sanwar.